Well, President Trump has announced Wednesday he's sending a surge of federal agents into Chicago, Albuquerque and other Democrat-run cities to crack down on Black Lives Matter protests, claiming the move is necessary to combat a rise in crime. This is Trump speaking this week. We're not going to let New York and Chicago and Philadelphia and Detroit and Baltimore and all of these — Oakland is a mess. We're not going to let this happen in our country, all run by liberal Democrats. This comes as the president faces increasing criticism for deploying paramilitary-style units to Portland, Oregon, where unidentified federal officers have attacked anti-racist protesters and even snatched activists off the streets in unmarked vans. On Wednesday night, federal forces fired tear gas at protesters in Portland once again. Among those hit was Portland Mayor Ted Wheeler, who also serves as Portland's police commissioner. Portland City Council voted to end cooperation between local police and federal law enforcement, and the American Civil Liberties Union is now suing the Department of Homeland Security, U.S. Marshal Service, as well as the city of Portland for attacking medics while they cared for injured protesters. Trump has responded by saying federal agents are doing a fantastic job and is now threatening to deploy them across the country. Now, in a remarkable statement, the Philadelphia district attorney has warned Trump's police forces that he will criminally charge them if they bring these same tactics to Philadelphia. D.A. Larry Krasner issued the statement Wednesday that, quote, my dad volunteered and served in World War II to fight fascism like most of my uncles, so we would not have an American president brutalizing and kidnapping Americans for exercising their constitutional rights and trying to make America a better place, which is what patriots do. Anyone, including federal law enforcement who unlawfully assaults and kidnaps people, will face criminal charges from my office. Again, the words of Larry Krasner the district attorney of Philadelphia, who joins us now from Philadelphia for more. D.A. Larry Krasner, thank you for joining us. Can you explain how exactly you plan to arrest federal agents, um, and what actions do you feel would warrant that? Uh, good morning. Well, first of all, we do not plan to arrest anyone. We, have plan we plan for people to obey the law. So if uh, any federal authorities were to come to Philadelphia and follow the law and follow the Constitution, the issue will not present, which is certainly what we all hope. But it's real simple. The law applies to the president of the United States, even though he doesn't think so. The law applies to law enforcement. The law applies to civilians. I mean, it is real simple. We have to be even handed. So if people are going to come to Philadelphia and in uniform, they're going to fracture the skulls of protesters with rubber bullets. They're going to jump out of rental vans and drag people into those vans without probable cause. They are committing crimes under the Pennsylvania statutes. These are Pennsylvania offenses over which the district attorney in Philly has jurisdiction over that area. And we can bring those charges. The law is very clear. Uh, we can proceed with those charges in state court. Under certain circumstances, they might end up being processed in federal court. But initially, we can bring those charges. We can pursue them. And as much as possible, we can put those individuals in front of a Philadelphia jury who might have something to say about those tactics. Well, I mean, the question is, does the president even have the legal authority to deploy uh, federal officers on the streets of uh, Philadelphia, irrespective of what they do? Uh, Cornell University constitutional law professor Michael Dorff said that federal authorities coming into states like this without the cooperation of state and local authorities is, quote, extraordinary outside the context of civil war. Uh, Larry Krasner, your response. So there, you know, there are certain kinds of overlapping jurisdiction. A couple of classic ones are over drug offenses, over gun offenses. And there are collaborations between state and federal law enforcement that go on all the time. In fact, they are happening in my office right now. Uh, in many different investigations. But there is also a longstanding uh, sort of protocol to this in which you inform each other of what you're doing. Some of the time, one of the, you know, one of the prosecutorial entities or police entities gets out of the way so as not to trip over it. That's not what we're seeing here. What we are seeing here is, A, who knows what, because it's Donald Trump, who knows what entity is going to show up in what uniform to do what. 
And what we are seeing is absolutely no interest in collaboration. But I think it's very important not to overstate what's really happening here. When, uh, you know, the president talks about how he's going to take over cities. Really? Is that what you're going to do? In Chicago, there are 12,500 active police officers. The last number I heard coming from uh, the president was he was going to send 150 federal agents of some sort. Really? Wow. That's 1%. That is 1% of the normal police force in Chicago. So we should not lose sight of the reality that what Donald Trump always does is he's got some shiny object that he's, he's shining over here, and he wants us to pay attention to it because he's doing some dirt in some other location. Here, he obviously is doing a pretty effective job of trying to distract from his incredible failures, including his failures with the pandemic and with the economy at this point. So we, it remains to be seen what exactly he'll do, if anything, in Philadelphia. It remains to be seen to what extent this is all fluff. Obviously, there have been some pretty terrible things that have happened in Portland that appear without perfect information, because I don't have perfect information, but they appear to be illegal and blatantly so. But all I can say is if, if federal authorities want to come to Philadelphia and break the law, then they will face the law like everyone else. E.A. Krasner, can you talk about your family's history? And would you say that President Trump's move, calling for a surge of these federal agents throughout the country, particularly in Democratic cities, um, would you call President Trump fascist? Um, I would say President Trump is definitely a wannabe fascist. I'm not sure he can spell the word, but he definitely is someone who's in love with, uh, with dictators. He's in love with authoritarianism, brutality racism, division, hate. His playbook is essentially the same playbook as the white supremacist playbook, which is, you know, as we see with uh, the Proud Boys, the Boogaloo movement, all this kind of stuff, we see that they are trying to take advantage of the peaceful protest, which is, is the vast majority of what it is, around George Floyd to become agent provocateurs, to get into it and to cause violence that wouldn't have been there otherwise. So once they have caused it, they can say, look at these people. Look at what these black people do, or look at what these left-wing people do. Well, they're not doing it. The Proud Boys are doing it. The Boogaloo uh, crew are doing it because, as they have repeatedly stated, they're looking to have a second civil war. As absurd as that may all sound, it's the same tactic that we're seeing with Donald Trump right now. We have cities that have not had unrest, that have not had an uprising for weeks. The only thing that's been happening in Philly for weeks has been a moderate amount of peaceful protest, and yet the president is announcing to the nation that Philadelphia's out of control. No, it's not. I'm here. I live here. Police commissioner's here. We all see what's going on. There is no problem. There is no crisis that would in any way require federal intervention. But once again, if he sends troops of some sort, federal agents of some sort in here to stir things up, to requisition people, to beat people up, if he sends it in, he's going to cause unrest. So what I'm saying is he is acting as an agent provocateur by using his authority to send people in. And what is the real purpose of this from his perspective? It's probably not a second civil war. Uh, it's, he's much more short-sighted and narcissistic than that. His real purpose is to distract from his dismal record, the fact that his campaign is dropping like a stone. In terms of my family history, uh, you know, I mean, it's just we have a lot of, of people, or they're all almost all past now, but we have a lot of people in the family who were of an age that they volunteered and they served in World War II. My dad served in the Pacific, on a Pacific island at an air base. I had an uncle who was in Germany. He was an artillery spotter, which is one lousy job to have because you're in between both sides watching the shells that have been fired from both sides, and hopefully they don't land on you. That's a tough thing to do. I had another one who lost most of his hearing serving on uh, a Navy vessel. And going a little further than that, if you look to my wife's side of the family, her father was career military. He was not in World War II, but he flew planes in a couple of different wars and eventually ended up being a, a pilot for an ambassador to Afghanistan, which is where my wife lived when she was a, a young child. So we go way back when it comes to this. That's not to you know say we're any different or any better. But we have someone here who avoided military service, not because he was a conscientious, uh, conscientious objector, but because he's entitled, privileged, cowardly, and lazy. We have this person pretending to be some kind of wannabe fascist, and um, it is intolerable. This is nothing that we can accept in the United States.